Good morning, everyone. For those of you just joining us, I'm Robin Roberts in New York. We're going to break into your regular programming with news on that deadly school well, first rampage I want to share in something with Florida. You. A tweet and County. a series of texts exchanged by two brothers students during the Parkland, Florida school shooting. The older brothers. High schoolers on the verge of turning 18 are now pre-registering to vote. The now's Nicole Grigg with the change Students that's coming. across the country walking out of schools to make a statement in support of change. But students at King High School are walking. Okay, so tell us your name and your grade. Uh, my name is Matthew Goodies and I'm a senior, 12th grade. CC Runyon and I'm a junior. My name is Alexander Rodriguez and I'm a sophomore. My name is Michelle and I'm a junior. Okay, and why are you doing this? I feel like we have the rights to stand up for what we believe in and it's not right for those 17 students to have been die and to die because they were shot down, shot by
There's other things like waiting periods, and there should be rules that keep people that shouldn't have guns from having bump them. And schools should be a, yeah, bump stop. That, what is that stuff? Why are we having those? People should be supporting you in what you're doing today. And I, and I, and I know that I appreciate the fact that the school understands the significance of what you're doing today. The and they interviewed me this morning, and I talked about the fact we need to hear your voice, and we need to support those judicial communities. And I think that's important because you are our community. It's not just some old guy. It's not some little kid. It's all of us. And we're all in this together. As of this morning, there have been 19 school students since January the 1st. Anybody know that? I studied up on this because I wanted to know how bad it was. It's horrible. I can remember if there was a school shooting. I'd have had CNN and NBC here now. Oh, yeah, there's a school shooting. Next week, we'll talk about the next one. Well, please just stop because you should be able to go to school. Very emotionally charged. Um, it's, you know, things like this that local politicians stay up at night. Worrying about students, worrying about their city, worrying about what you want to do to make people safe in their own community. And I apologize. Normally I don't get, I get mad. I don't normally get teary out. I get mad. She gives me lectures. <laughs> now, Mary, you've got to make sure you do this. So. <laughs> This but is it's, you know, it's a, um, it's a, it's an issue that, you know, if I can encourage you, I was a, I was a senior class president at, at Carmel High School. I was a padre, sorry. Um, it's all good. It's a, you <laughs> Don't know, forget here. Don't forget here. <laughs> so you guys <laughs> kicked our butts every year in all the sports, so it's fine. But, um, but it's one of those things that, like, if you are, if you are moved to act and you are moved to speak, continue that throughout your life. Absolutely continue that throughout your life. That is the most powerful voice you can have is voting people out of office, voting people in office, saying no to things you don't believe in, saying yes to things you do believe in. And that's where your power comes from. Here are the names and the stories of all 17 victims. Alyssa Almeda. Alyssa was 14 years old and was a student at Stoneman Douglas and played soccer for the Parkland Trailblazers soccer. Lori, her mother, dropped her daughter off at school on Wednesday and said, I love you. When Alyssa's mother heard of the shooting, 
she hustled to school, but it was too late. She said, I knew at that point she was gone. I felt it in my heart. Alyssa was smart, beautiful, talented, successful, awesome, and an amazing soccer player. Chris Hickson. Chris Hickson was remembered as a loving father, husband, and veteran. He was the athletic director and wrestling coach at Stoneman Douglas High. Hickson was a huge NASCAR fan and was set to celebrate his 50th birthday on February 25th, 2018. Frank Valair, one of Hickson's co-workers, said, he was there always, whenever there was a need. He cared for all around him as if they were his own. When we heard what happened at Douglas, we knew he'd be in the middle of the action. Carmen Shentra, a musician, was a future gator who would have been would have made this a better world for all of us after she would have attended the University of Florida. She was a perfectionist who loved red lipstick and teal colored bags. She was also a National Merit Scholar semifinalist. Kara Luren loved the beach, adored her cousins, and was an excellent student. She was only 14 years old. Kara was an Irish dancer and always had a smile on her face. Nicholas Dorrit. Nicholas was a promising swimmer and was recruited for the University of Indianapolis swim team. He was captain of the swim team at his high school and brought happiness to everyone around him. He dreamed of making the Olympic swim team and going to the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Joaquin Oliver. People often spell 17-year-old Joaquin Oliver's first name wrong, so he went by the nickname Guac. He played basketball in the City Recreational League and loved to write poetry. He was always such a positive person. He always knew how to make us smile, a friend of Guac said. Joaquin loved singer Frank Ocean and had been visiting colleges in Central Florida. Meadow Polak was 18 years old and planned to go to Ling University in Boca Raton, Florida next year. She was just unbelievable, Mr. Polak said. She was a very strong-willed girl who had everything going for her. Mr. Polak described his daughter as smart, beautiful, and caring. She worked at her boyfriend's family's motorcycle repair business. She just knew how to get what she wanted all the time. Mr. Polak said nothing could ever stop her from what she wanted to achieve. Luke Hoyer was a 15-year-old basketball player who admired NBA stars like LeBron James and Steph Curry, and he loved mac and cheese. Anytime we got bored and wanted to throw or shoot, he'd be the person to go to, Luke's cousin said. Luke was the youngest of three children. I know Luke loved his family, his cousin said. I know he did. He had a huge heart. He was quiet, but a very happy individual. Elena Petty was 14 years old. She had helped do cleanup work in Florida after Hurricane Irma, and she was an active member of a volunteer group with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Elena was also a member of the Junior Reserves Officer. Scott Beagle, a 35-year-old geography teacher, grew up on Long Island but attended the University of Miami and later got a teaching job in Florida. He had a keen sense of humor, taking an ordinary situation and finding the comedy in it. This was his first year at Douglas High. Beagle died while protecting students. He unlocked the classroom door to let students back in, but didn't have the chance to lock it again before being gunned down. According to a friend of Beagle's, he had always put the needs of others ahead of his own. He was a hero way before this happened. Jamie Gutenberg, 14-year-old Jamie Gutenberg danced nonstop. She went on for hours according to her aunt, Ellen Gutenberg. Jamie was warm and loved being with her cousin. Danielle, a teacher at the dance studio in Parkland, wrote on Facebook on Wednesday night, we lost one of our beautiful dancers in one of the shootings today. Jamie, you were like any other. You made yourself known wherever you were. You were funny, spunky, hilarious, and always bright in everyone's day. Martin Duque was 14 years old and was a freshman. He was humorous, outgoing, and a fan of Star Wars. He enjoyed playing soccer and was part of the Junior ROTC program. The award he received in Junior ROTC was Medal of Heroism, Perfect Attendance, Leadership Development, Athletic, Good Conduct, Personal Appearance, and Parade Ribbons. Peter Wang. 15-year-old Peter Wang was always so nice and so generous, his cousin Aaron said. He was the kid in school who would be friends with everyone. And his other cousin, Lin Chin, said he didn't care about popularity. Chin said a friend of Peter's 
told her he had held the door open for other students to get out when the shooting happened. Alex Gaster was 14 years old and played the trombone at the Stoneman Douglas Marching Band. A freshman at high school, he often played basketball with his friends and was a sweetheart kid, his father said. Mr. Skaster said Alex loved his mother, who died when he was only five years old. His older brother also attends Stoneman Douglas and he survived the shooting. According to his father, Alex just wanted to do well and make his parents happy. 14-year-old Gina Montaldo was a member of her school's Winter Color Guard team. Andy Mrokjek, who has worked as a choreographer at Stoneman Douglas, posted a tribute to Gina online. We lost a beautiful soul tonight, he wrote. She was quiet during practice, but the second we stopped, she was bubbly. 17-year-old Helena Ramsey was smart, kind-hearted, and thoughtful. Her relative, Kurt, Curtis Page, wrote on Facebook, Though she was somewhat reserved, she had relentless motivation towards her academic studies, and her soft, warm demeanor brought the best out in all who knew her. Isabella, who hid in a closet during the shooting, said she later heard from friends that Helena died shielding another student from bullets. Aaron Feast was a football coach at Madgery Stoneman Douglas High School. He was described as a hero by students and coworkers. Feast shielded multiple students from the shooter, losing his life in the process.